I am so glad to see all of you here with me today at Kids Church. I'm glad to see you, Kai. Hi, Cash. Hi, JT. Hi, Max. What's up, Jamila? Hi, Piper. Hi, Cammie. So glad you guys are all here at Kids Church with me. And we have had a super fun time all month long, um, really digging deep to find that there's some things that are more valuable, even the buried treasure. Talking about wisdom. Wisdom is just finding out what you should do and doing it. We can find wisdom when we spend time talking to God, when we read the Bible, by um, hanging out with wise people. All of those things are super great ways that we can grow wiser in our relationship with God and in our relationship with Jesus. Because you know what? That wisdom is always worth searching for. And it can help us every single day of our lives, you guys. So I don't know about you, but I am um, I'm personally really thankful that we follow a God that can guide us, that can help us, who wants to be there with us through the good times and the really tough times. And he's always there ready to give us the wisdom that we need to live our lives every day, day in, day out, helping us make good choices. He wants us to keep searching for that wisdom forever. So we're gonna practice our searching skills right now. I'm gonna show you an image with a bunch of items on it. It's like a, a search and find image. Um, and then I'm going to show you an image of something that's in that pile and you have to try and find it. It's like, where's Waldo, right? So are you guys ready for the first image? Okay, see if you can find this image and feel free to pause the video to give yourself enough time. Did you find it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, how about this one? Good job, everybody. Okay, you wanna look for one more? All right, here you go. See if you can find this. Great job, you guys are really good searchers. You know who else was a good searcher? Paul from the Bible, he kept searching for wisdom and encouraging other people to do the same thing. That's what all those letters are. He has some really great words of wisdom for us on how our thoughts affect us and our search for wisdom. Bible story time. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Romans, chapter 12, Verse 2. If there was ever a man who thought he knew how to think the best thoughts, it was Paul. As a Jewish religious leader, Paul knew all the 613 Jewish laws inside and out. He was convinced he knew the exact right way to live. But then Paul met Jesus in a flash of light and thunder, and everything flipped. Paul's entire way of thinking changed. Jesus is the Son of God. Paul began to travel across the land, starting churches as he shared the amazing news about Jesus. He also wrote long letters, both to the churches that he had started and to ones that he had heard of or wished to visit. I, Paul, am writing this letter. Many of Paul's letters are collected in the New Testament, including a famous letter he wrote to the church in Rome. I long to see you. I want us to encourage one another in the faith we share. In his letter to the Romans, Paul shares the truth about what God has done for us in sending Jesus and how that can change our lives. Romans 12, 2 offers a big challenge. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul knew all about having a mind makeover, but changing your thoughts 
isn't easy. Whatever you do, don't think about an elephant. Do not think about an elephant. You're thinking about an elephant. It's really hard to control your thoughts. When Paul says, don't live the way this world lives, he's saying, don't let this world push you into thinking and saying and doing things. Imagine that you're modeling clay. Modeling clay can be turned into all sorts of cool stuff, like this, or this, or even this. The problem is, no matter how much you shove it around and shape it, modeling clay doesn't form anything that lasts. And we all know how modeling clay ends up. Mixed up, dried up bits. We can get squashed too when we let the world around us tell us how to act, what to say, what to wear, what to play. We run from one thing to the next without stopping to think about what really matters. That's why Paul reminds us next, let your way of thinking be completely changed. We all know it's really hard to change your thoughts just by trying hard. Yeah, there's only one way to make lasting change, and that's to let God work in your thoughts as well as in your heart. Imagine this is your brain, and throughout the day, it begins to boil with a gazillion thoughts. Oh, why do I have to get up now? I hate school. I can't believe I have Miss Wells this year. She's the most boring teacher ever. Everyone else has a better lunch than I do. I can't run a whole mile in PE. It's not fair I have to finish my homework before I can play my game. You can make all those thoughts change in an instant, but you can invite God to begin to change those thoughts for you. And as you spend more time focused on God's words written down in the Bible and spend time with others who follow God, your thoughts will begin to shift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Over time, new thoughts will replace the old anxious ones. God will begin to change you from the inside out. Now, you're no longer modeling clay. Instead of being pushed around from the outside, you have a brand new way of thinking. Paul writes, Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what He wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. When something difficult happens, you can stand strong and ask God to show you what to do and what to say. And the more you invite God to change what's happening in your head, the more you grow day by day in wisdom. If we listen to messages that we get from certain movies or songs and really keep them in our brain and take them to heart, or maybe um, the way other people talk around us or on TV or um, even in our family sometimes, we might start to think, uh, we might start to think like this um, and have kind of yucky thoughts and um, maybe feel angry, anger, okay? Um, like more stuff, right? That these are the things that we need, all right? That it's all about um, the stuff that we have in our life or maybe it's about being worried, okay? Um, if we're not careful, we can forget what really matters, right? And we can, um, we can let the world around us Tell us how to act and think and, um, and what to do and how to behave, all right? And sometimes it's really hard to not think that way when we're surrounded by it, right? And we can't like really get rid of it, okay? Like it's really hard to stop thinking that way, all right? 
But just like when the guy in the Bible story video, he poured that clear water in, okay? It changed it. That's what God can do for us, you guys. We, when we ask God to, um, to begin to change our thoughts and help us control them and not let the yucky thoughts um, stay in our brain, that's how we live with true wisdom every day. And it's the words that we get from the Bible, right? It's like trust. Trust, right? How about um, love over anger? How about others over stuff? Okay, how about, um, what are some other new thoughts? How about um, just turning to God when you're worried, okay? If you focus on those things and let those parts of God trust and love and other people and talking to Him, that's what's going to help you get rid of those other things, okay? And clear it all away. Just like I was able to erase those yucky words once I wrote over them with the positive words. So over time, those new thoughts are going to replace those old thoughts in your brain. As you focus on trusting God instead of being worried, right? You're going to find wisdom and that's what we're searching for. Instead of being angry or frustrated when you feel that way, Focus on trying to love other people. That anger will go away. When you seem to be more focused on stuff and maybe getting more stuff, try thinking about other people and putting them and their needs before your own. You guys, remember, nothing can ever separate you from God's love. And he'll help you to feel loved and secured and um, give you a place where you belong and you'll begin to share that love and that kindness with other people instead of just thinking about yourself. You guys, everything right now comes down to this. Never stop growing in wisdom. So will you pray with me right now and ask God to help us do just that? Dear God, thank you for giving us such an amazing way to grow in wisdom. You can help us change our thoughts so we can focus on you and what's true about you instead of the things we might hear in the world around us. You want us to dig deep and discover what matters most, and you've given us all we need to become wise. Help us spend time reading your word, talking with you, and spending time with people who follow you so we can keep growing in wisdom. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys, a lot of people in the world do things just because everybody else is doing it. But Paul wrote that we shouldn't live that way, that we shouldn't live in the same way as the world, that we should think differently, and we should stand out just like Jesus did. You see, when Jesus was here, he showed us, everyone, a different way to live where we don't just um, like but love everybody, even our enemies. And when we put our faith in Jesus, when we believe that he actually died for us and he came back to life, his Holy Spirit will change us and we'll be able to live in a completely new way. And he'll um, help us want to share that love with all the people around us. Wisdom is a treasure you are always going to be hunting for your entire life, but it is totally worth the hunt and the search. So keep digging, you guys. Keep digging right now by downloading the small group activities from the description of this video. Now, for the question of the week. How are you wiser now than you used to be? Think about it. I bet you can come up with something and make sure you guys tune in next week because we are starting a whole new life app for the month of September. Initiative. We're gonna learn how to boldly do what needs to be done. I hope you're gonna come back and join me for that and have a fantastic week. I love you.